Today we're going to talk a little bit about food plot site selection, soil testing, and spraying. Three really important things on the front end that have big outcomes on the, on the establishment and the success of the plot later on. So when you start off talking about where you want to put the food plot, you want to make sure you have three big things covered. First and foremost, do you have access to that spot? That really plays a big role in can you get equipment in like tractors or ATVs to help you get that food plot in place. You're going to have to establish the area, dig up the dirt, rough it up, get in, spray it, get your seed in the ground, and then finally maintain it. All of those which require some level of equipment. Sometimes it's something you can pack in, other times it's not. So you want to make sure you have good access points to that area. Secondly, the reason you're putting that food plot in, you want to make sure you're thinking about how you're going to get to that plot without really disturbing wildlife. If you're using it for hunting or wildlife photography, you want to make sure that that plot finds that balance between close to where the animals are routinely, while not being able to too close that when you go into it, you're disturbing them and causing them to leave. So you want to make sure you have multiple access points by walking into the plot so that you minimize your disturbance while you're getting there. Now if you're planting this food plot just to feed wildlife and you don't care about seeing them in the plot, then that's not as big of a concern. Lastly, we want to look at the surrounding area for that location to identify a couple things. First, is it a location that gets disturbed a lot by either yourself, your property owners, your neighbors, or potentially people you don't even want on the property? Because the more disturbance that occurs, the less likely the wildlife are to use it as frequently. Secondly, you want to look and see what else is around it. Uh, are you competing as a food source with something nearby? So if your neighbor has an agricultural field and they're planting corn and soybeans on a rotation, that's a really good wildlife food. So if you are thinking about planting soybeans 50 yards away from that, you're going to have a lot of competition, especially because you're not going to be able to produce food at the scale that that farmer is. So think about where you want to put your food plot relative to other food sources that are potentially outside of your control. So all of those things really play a big role as you think about where you want to put your food plot. So think, you know, access for both equipment and sneaking into your plot for your recreational use, and also disturbance levels and competition levels. That'll all help you have a good grasp of where you may want to put your food plot or may, where you may not want to put your food plot on your property. The next section we're going to talk about soil sampling. It's a vital step in your preparation for putting a food plot in that you take soil samples. It requires three simple tools, first being the probe that our demonstrator is about to put in the soil here, second being a bucket to take that sample and put it in, and thirdly a paper bag. Now the process is relatively simple. You just put that probe into the soil about four inches. When you remove the probe, you take the soil out, put it in the bucket, and repeat the process multiple times over the entire area of the food plot. And what you're doing is you're getting a, a general idea of what the quality of that soil is in that, in that area that you picked out for your food plot. And based on that, that sample, you take that and get it processed and analyzed, and it comes back and tells you if their soil is lacking things like phosphorus or nitrogen. And then you can take steps to correct that so that you have a good solid soil base to work off right when you put your seed into that soil. It is recommended to take one sample per 20 acres. However, when you're doing food plots, you want to make sure that you're taking one sample per food plot. Now, when you finish, you take all the sample that you've collected, put it in the bucket, shake it up, and place it in the paper bag. You can take that bag to a county extension office, and they can actually get that sample processed for you, sometimes at no to little cost. Remember, this is a vital step in having a successful food plot, so don't skip taking soil samples. The next and final component we're going to cover today is talking about spraying your plot area prior to planting. And what this really is, is you're pre-treating the area so that you can kill back the existing vegetation to get a better establishment of your food plot. You're trying to eliminate any potential competition of vegetation for those seeds as they come up. Now there's various ways you could do this. Um, the way that I am doing this as an example here with the backpack full of water is walking this field um, with a backpack sprayer and just sweeping back and forth 
to get a good coverage. Now this is not perfect, but it will be effective for a plot that is this size, which for our demonstration purposes here, we're using about a tenth of an acre. Now a backpack sprayer can be an efficient method to do this treatment, especially in areas where you cannot get a uh, full-sized uh, tractor in with a boon on it, or even in some places where ATVs may have a difficult time getting to, uh, to get their sprayers in. So you can still be effective with a simple tool like a backpack sprayer. Now you want to do a little research into what vegetation is in your field that you're about to plant to know what kind of herbicide you need to use to treat the area. Now in cases where there's a lot of grasses, glyphosate is a very simple and readily available herbicide that can be applied and have a very good effective burn down of that vegetation. Now you want to do this any kind of burn down in preparation two to three weeks before you think you may be getting in there to work that bed and create that seed bed with a um, disc or harrow. And the reason for that is you need to give the, the herbicide time to, to take effect and actually kill that vegetation. If you do use herbicides to kill the vegetation, make sure you read up and follow all safety precautions uh, when you're applying the herbicide. You want to make sure that you're using at the very least eye protection and a facial covering to pre prevent that from being inhaled. Best case scenario is you're wearing protective clothing to cover up your entire body. Now because I'm doing this by hand I'm actually leaving the possibility of missing some areas and I guarantee you I have. So what we can do is we can actually go back about a week and a half after this and make sure we spot check those areas to get, a, to get those potential green areas that we missed. As you can see, I'm very slowly walking and, and taking that sprayer uh, across my body just to get as good of a coverage as possible. Now this is not perfect, but it should do the job for this tenth of an acre plot that we're using as demonstration. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk a little bit more about the equipment you're going to need to get these food plots established, including how we're going to apply those soil tests that we ta had taken, what kind of seed selection you can go through, and, and how do you then plant that seed that you select. Finally, we're going to talk a little bit more about maintaining these plots and how to determine if you've had a success. As usual, you can always reach out to your county extension office with any questions or find us here at the Forestry and Natural Resources Extension team, and we'd be happy to help you out.